This is a quick video showing some simple and effective methods for disinfecting your sinus rinse bottle. And these practices are specifically pertinent to the current coronavirus pandemic as these disinfection practices can decrease the contraction and spread of coronavirus as well. First question, should you use your sinus rinse? Now I've seen at least one article in mainstream media suggesting it's not safe to use your sinus irrigation, and I get it, these are scary times, and I understand how crazy it must seem to irrigate the inside of your nose with something that could be contaminated. We also have to weigh this against the fact that saline irrigations work really well for many patients with sinus and nasal disease, so if you're one of those patients who's miserable, you may not want to take the risk of stopping your irrigations. So that brings us to your first option, which is to choose not to irrigate. Maybe it's not worth the risk or the angst of thinking about the possible risk of bottle contamination. But for those who wish to continue irrigating, here are some tips for maintaining a contamination-free sinus rinse bottle. Now it should be mentioned that the methods outlined in this talk are recommended by the CDC on their website. You can find those at the URL below. And while their recommendations are for disinfecting various surfaces, the concepts can be applied to disinfecting a sinus rinse bottle as well. Now just to review, most of you are using one of the following uh, types of rinse bottles, but there are other types on the market. Regardless of the type of bottle you're using, you're trying to create a saline solution by using either pre-made salt packets or your own salt recipe by mixing with water, some form of water. And you may or may not be adding topical medications to your rinse. And now here are some steps to decrease the risk of both bacterial and viral contamination when we do our sinus irrigations. First, to create your saline mixture, you want to use either boiled water that you cool down or distilled water that you warm up in a microwave. You want to avoid tap water as contamination is unpredictable. Next, you irrigate the solution through your nose as you've been doing and have been instructed. The next essential step is to clean the inside and the outside of the bottle with dish soap and tap water and make sure to clean the bottle tip as well. This step is important for mechanically removing particulate matter, grime, and some of the organisms, and this is going to allow our disinfectant to work more optimally. And the last step is to disinfect the bottle and the bottle tip. And while a variety of techniques can work to destroy bacteria and viruses, here are just two simple ones that you can do at home. And you can do either of these, you don't need to do both. One option is to rinse the inside of the bottle and wipe down the tip with 70% isopropyl alcohol and then leave this open to dry to air. And then secondly, you can boil the entire bottle and the bottle tip for five minutes. Both of these options effectively destroy bacteria and viruses and specifically the coronavirus. So to summarize on how to decrease contamination of your sinus rinse bottle, it starts by using boiled or distilled water to make your saline mixture. Once you finish irrigating your sinuses, then you clean the bottle with both soap and water, the inside and outside of the bottle, as well as the bottle tip. And this then primes the bottle for disinfection, the final step, for which you can use either 70% isopropyl alcohol, or you can boil the bottle and the bottle tip in boiling water for five minutes. We should really try to clean and disinfect the sinus rinse bottles after every use or daily at a minimum to decrease the risk of contraction and spread of the coronavirus. I want to end with a few points about coronavirus that we all know, but I still want to stress. Please take this seriously if you haven't thus far and realize it's a worldwide concern and we're all responsible for decreasing the spread of the virus. As best you can, avoid travel and crowded areas or events as these are high-risk points for transmission. And finally, yes, washing your hands is important.